I am super excited about this one. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my all-time favorite watches I've had the opportunity to feature on the channel. It's a watch that I ended up loving a whole lot more than expected. It is the new Bel Canto Classic from Christopher Ward, and this thing is something else. Big thanks to Christopher Ward for lending this in for a few days. Really appreciate it, but let's get to it and check out the watch. All right, so I got a little time with a couple of the older non-classic models at the Toronto Timepiece show a few weeks ago, and with everything that was happening at the show, they were one of the standout watches for me. Since the first Bel Canto models came out back in 2022, they have received a lot of hype. Not quite Moonswatch hype that came out the same year, but this, I think, deserves it way more. At first, the Bel Canto was very difficult to get, and the production just wasn't there. But since then, Christopher Ward has increased production from 50 units to 500 units per month. A few days ago, Christopher Ward released the Bel Canto Classic, which has surprisingly quite a different feel looks wise over the original design and is available in a total of four color options there's a gold dial version a green which looks really nice too there's a silver which between that and this blue is probably my favorite with its blued hands and of course the blue version i have here today We'll get to the fun stuff here in a second, but all models are available on either a leather strap or the titanium Bader bracelet. The bracelet is a really good bracelet. It's got all the fixings with quick release spring bars, screwed links for sizing, and well-finished brushed links. The clasp is double-signed with the logo on the outer and Christopher Ward on the inner part of the clasp. We also have an on-the-fly adjustment system. Works really good. Overall, great bracelet, but I wasn't sure how I felt about the bracelet on this particular watch at first. It works pretty good, I think, now that I've gotten to see it in person. Much better than expected, although I think for me this would end up on a strap if it was mine. So I'd probably opt for one of the strap versions to save a little money quick rundown of what's happening with the dial here and the most significant change with these is the laser engraved guilloche finished dial which is very dynamic when it comes to how it catches the light it can go from dark to very bright and the shade of blue they're using is beautiful the other big change is with the actual time telling part of the watch and yeah you get distracted by the whole chime thing sometimes but this does give us the time to They've changed up the look, adding Roman numerals. I'd love to have both side by side here, but the ring with the Roman numerals and minute markers is apparently a little thicker on the new models. The hands are brushed down the center and polished on either side, so they almost always are catching at least some light, and the minute hand reaches right out to the minute track, so legibility is actually not that bad. I did see Watch Chris has put out a side-by-side -side with both versions of the watch, so I'll put a link to that in the description below. There's a few other notable differences, including the thickness and even the sound of the chime, so check that out for more details on that. I guess it is time to get to the highlight of the watch here, and that is that this is a sonnery au passage watch, which means it chimes at every hour. So. At the bottom of the dial, we have the components of the watch that make that happen in the shape of a songbird. With the press of the button at the four o'clock, you can turn the chime on or off. Right now it is in the off position, but we'll turn it on. Back off, and it does chime as soon as you turn it on as well. We're back on here again. When I had this demoed for me at the Toronto show, Mike Pearson described it as putting the bird to sleep or waking it up. You can see at the beak of the bird, it has an indicator printed on the dial showing if it's on or off. And when you do turn it on, like I say, the watch chimes straight away. 
just going to pull the crown out here. And as every hour passes, the hammer will raise, and at the 12, we'll strike that U-shaped gong. And what I think I'll do is let me try to get the mic right up to the watch so you can give it a good listen. So yeah, isn't that just so cool? This thing is so impressive. By the way, I never ask, but if you're liking the video so far, hit that subscribe button. I've got some really nice watches in the pipeline coming, but back to the Belcanto here and running the watch is a Salida SW200, which has been heavily modified using over 60 components to create the FS01 module that sits on the SW200 to make all of this magic happen. The case of the watch is well finished as usual from Christopher Ward. It's made from grade five titanium. The crown up at the 12 o'clock is signed and the case back is a screw down case back with an image of a sound wave there which suits the watch. Size on the watch comes in at a case width of 41.5 millimeters. The lug to lug is 47.7 millimeters, but the male end links bring that out to 53.1. Lug opening is 22 millimeters and the thickness is 13.6 millimeters, including the boxed sapphire crystal. Water resistance on the watch is 30 meters. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And this wears so good. It's just a loner, so I don't want to mess with strap changes, but I think for me it'll wear even better on a strap. Either way, I'm impressed. It's not a cheap watch by any means, but for what you're getting, there's really nothing out there that compares in this price range that I'm aware of. Cost for the watch comes in at $42.25 USD on the strap, $45.40 on bracelet, and these are currently on pre-order for the end of January 2025, so not too far out. Link to where you can find these will be in the description below. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to stop by, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.